I just want to put a disclaimer out there. I'm not speaking for anybody's journey here. I'm not discrediting uh, the journey of other women and partners that are going through this. I know some people have it way, way, way worse than me. Um, so yeah, I just want to be sensitive to women that um, women that have been on this journey a lot longer than I have, and my prayers are with you. I've been meaning to do this video for so long and every time I set up the camera and go to do it I just feel that no one is going like no one really cares or no one's going through the same thing uh, at least at my age I guess my biggest reason for doing this is one to help myself um, I feel like talking about it helps me and two to kind of just prove that how do I say this without being cliche um I guess the easiest way to explain it is um Instagram or any social media platform makes everything seem easy and wonderful and I'm definitely guilty for it uh through pictures and not showing, I guess, real life. Blake and I have been trying to conceive or get pregnant for a really long time. I feel that without, I feel that sharing this, I guess, journey is just gonna, I hope, help somebody, if it's just one person, understand that you're not alone. Don't get me wrong, I wanted to wait to share this because I've been vlogging kind of this whole journey so far and I wanted to make this like magical like pregnancy announcement being like it's been such a long hard journey and we're finally pregnant but that's not gonna like that will that's not gonna help anyone going through the things they're going through right now and I'm leaning on so many like YouTube videos and so many fertility groups for support that why not share the journey as I'm going through it. I kind of almost feel embarrassed for sharing that we're going through fertility stuff. Like a lot of people my age maybe aren't even thinking about kids. Um, I'm 26 and I've known that I'm going to have fertility issues. Um, probably since I was 15 or 16, which I find fortunate I found out so young because I know a lot of women find out as they're trying and that can be devastating. Um, I was diagnosed with PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome when I was 16. Um, I didn't really take the diagnosis. It's not something traditional PCOS symptoms I don't have. The only reasoning for the diagnosis was uh, cystic ovaries. So I have a ton of cysts on my ovaries uh, and it's extremely painful and irregular periods. So those two things was ultrasound diagnosing, you know, how many cysts I had on my ovaries and then uh, irregular periods. I would go, I got a period really, really late. I got it when I was like 17 or 18 and then um, I thought that was just because I was like thinner or like more athletic. Uh, but it is a very, it is a symptom of PCOS. When I was diagnosed so young, the doctor, my doctor, my family doctor did describe that uh, infertility is a huge um, issue with patients with PCOS. So I kind of knew what I was getting into so young. At 19, I was with Blake. Um, and we kind of just had this like mentality of wanting to be young parents. I've always wanted to be a mom, like so maternal. Yeah, like I, like my dream is to be a mom. Um, I literally wanted kids at like 19 or 20. Like I was ready to have babies at 20 years old. So um, when I met Blake, he was on like the same page as me. Like we both wanted to be young parents. Um, we moved in six months after meeting each other together and now we've been with each other over seven years so knowing that it was going to be hard for me to have kids honestly like a year after meeting Blake we started not using any protection like I said I stopped taking birth control after a year 
of being on it and we were just doing what we were going to do. Um, I would say, not essentially saying we were trying at first, but we were definitely not taking any precautions whatsoever um, and we were seeing what happens. It wasn't until maybe a year later when I was 20, 21 that we were like, hmm, nothing's happened so, which nothing was happening which I expected because of the PCOS, but didn't think really registering that it's going to take more than a year to have a baby. Still being 20, 21 um, and not having like a place of our own yet, we were just renting and, well, renting, we were living in my parents' basement forever. Um, we, we were just like seeing what happens and if we were to conceive, we would have obviously rushed to buy a place and stuff like that. But just kind of going through the motions, we traveled a ton, Blake was doing his bodybuilding shows and we were just like living the dream and like waiting for like a nice surprise to pop up. It wasn't until last year, so maybe yeah, yeah full five years of trying. Um, and like I said at the beginning, it wasn't really trying. We were just not taking any, we were not doing anything to prevent anything. But towards, you know, two, three years later, we were, like I was doing ovulation strips and timing stuff up and it just still wasn't happening. So last year, which would have been 2020, I made the decision that, okay, I wanted a baby at 20 or like 21 and I am now 25. So I made the decision to call up a fertility clinic. I had no, I had no idea how to do it. I was like, they're gonna take me as a joke. I'm 25. Most people call up when they're like, well, I assumed most people call up when they're like 40. I'm having trouble conceiving. I need help. I had no idea what to expect. I told my family doctor that we, well, she kind of knew we were trying for a really long time. She said, you know, after usually a year or two, we would get a referral for a fertility clinic. So family doctor gave me a referral to a fertility clinic and we didn't have the best experience with the first one we were at. I'm not going to name which one. I don't know. You want to trust, you want them to understand. And there was a few things with um, Blake that they didn't agree with and after getting like literally so much blood work and all everything set up, we switched. We switched to a clinic um, that I love and they have the highest rate of fertility in Canada. So that there are so many promising um, aspects of this clinic. We also know a family friend went there and they have two babies from there. So I called this new clinic up and I was just like, hi. Um, I can't get pregnant <laughs> and we've been trying a long time. Once I had a discussion with the nurse at the clinic, they got me in contact with the doctor at the clinic and we had a very good phone call and discussed that I already know I have PCOS and that Blake might or may not have issues too, we didn't know. Um, yeah, so. After having a call with the doctor, I felt like this doctor, based on the experience I had at the other clinic, really understood my situation and really compassionate and didn't just rush through the call, which I appreciated because they're so busy. Um, he said, when, like, when is your time and when do you want to get pregnant? And he said, you, are, you know, you're really young and I say really young, but most, most people don't find out they have fertility uh, problems until they start trying, which is like, the average being between 28, 30, you know, 32. Um, but because I knew I uh, I was gonna have issues getting pregnant, we've been trying for so long already that I explained that, you know, I'm ready now. So I guess at that moment, it was like hope of him being like, when do you wanna get pregnant? That hope of like, he's gonna be able to do it within like the next month. It was like, when do you wanna get pregnant? I was like, uh, now? Like, whenever? Like, soon? And he was like, okay, we're gonna get things rolling. And in my mind, I was like, huh, oh my god, like, he really knows, he, he's really on top of this, and it's gonna happen within the next, like, month, the next cycle. That's not how it worked for me. Um, we, like I said, I've been trying the past year um, with, with the new fertility doctor. Oh, it, it is such a, it's such a hard thing to go through. I know there's worse things and I know I don't have it nearly as bad as some women and um, 
it, it, when you're trying to conceive and you can't and you think something's well something is wrong with you it's it's hard to accept um, especially wanting a baby so bad and the joy of finding out you're pregnant is just like something I can't even imagine the the like excitement that would happen um, there is a chance that we won't conceive there's always that chance when you have fertility issues um, my friend Chelsea always says oh I'm crying because I love her she always says don't you know like don't put that into the universe um, don't put it that you're never gonna have a baby into the universe like you're going to it's hard when you don't want to get your hopes up so each month that rolls by, you like think in your head, I'm probably not pregnant. Like you look at the test, probably not pregnant. You don't want to get your hopes up. And that, that sucks because it should be like the most exciting time is checking a test. But each time you know in the back of your head, it's probably just going to be one line and not two. And that's hard. Anyone who's going through the same thing, um, it's such a hard thing to do and I know that a lot of people don't understand like the disappointment and like the stress it has um, so my heart is with you I'm sending you magical baby dust and I will say a prayer I think that the most important thing is to stay positive and you know, no matter like no matter some way somehow if, it's it's going to work um i'm going like, like i will have a child whether it be biological or adopted it will work so um yeah i just want to say thank you like for watching this video or understanding the journey i'm on i'm so excited to share it and hopefully i don't know hopefully this is like the start of a vlog series that end up being magical and I have a little baby in my arms. <laughs>